It has been five months since Senator Bernie Sanders ended his own presidential campaign. Today was his first major public address since ending that campaign. In that speech, Senator Sanders warned of what he called the unprecedented and dangerous moment we find ourselves in now with a president who's casting doubt on November's results ahead of time and who, Senator Sanders says, will do everything in his power to stay in office regardless of the election results. It is terribly important that we actually listen to and take seriously what Donald Trump is saying. From a president who is a pathological liar, who has strong authoritarian tendencies, in Trump's mind, there is no conceivable way that he should leave office. He is attempting massive voter suppression. He wants to defund the Postal Service in order to limit the use of mail-in ballots. He urged the supporters in North Carolina to try voting twice, asked to give a direct answer on whether he would accept the election results. Trump refused. He wants his supporters, some of whom are members of armed militias, to intimidate voters. Trump may well announce that he has won the election before all of the votes are counted. In the United States, the president does not determine who can or cannot vote and what ballots will be counted. That may be what his friend Putin does in Russia. It is not and it will not be done in America. This is an election between Donald Trump and democracy. And democracy must win. And democracy must win. Senator Bernie Sanders' first major public speech today since dropping out of the presidential race five months ago. Senator says he now plans to spend the next six weeks until Election Day urging the country to prepare for, quote, a nightmare scenario in which Trump declares himself the winner of the election, regardless of the results, and refuses to step down. Joining us now for the interview, I'm very happy to say, uh, is Vermont Independent Senator Bernie Sanders. Senator Sanders, I'm so happy to have you here tonight. Thank you for making time. Well, thank you, Rachel. Uh, I played a whole bunch of your speech there because I think it was important and because you kind of tore the lid off here. Can you just, can you talk a little bit about your decision to give this speech and the urgency that you feel about this? Look, Rachel, I am worried and have been worried for a long time that we have a president who will refuse to leave office if he loses the election. And what I believe we have got to do is listen carefully to what he says. I know there are people out there who say, oh, Trump's crazy. He says this, he says that. Don't take him seriously. Take him seriously. He says that he's not sure if he will leave the presidency if he loses the election. He says that the only way, Rachel, the only way that he can possibly lose is if the election is rigged. No other way. And if that is what he believes and he loses, that means the election is rigged and he is not going to leave office. And right now, as you know, he is mounting a massive assault on so-called voter fraud. Only problem is study after study has shown we have virtually no voter fraud in the United States. That's something that his attorney general confirmed today. Benjamin Ginsburg, you may remember that name. He was the lead Republican uh, election official uh, during the 2000 Gore versus Bush recount in Florida. This is the lead Republican guy on these issues. He said voter fraud in America is virtually non-existent. So why is Trump doing all of this? And here's the answer. For whatever reason, and we don't have to discuss why, it turns out that Republicans are far more likely to walk into a polling booth and vote than Democrats. Democrats are far more likely to use mail-in ballots. So what could very well happen is on election night, when you're sitting there moderating the show, it appears that Trump is winning in Michigan and Wisconsin and Florida. People see it, oh my goodness, Trump is ahead. And then at 10 o'clock in the night, Trump announces, I won the election. And by the way, my attorney general has told me there's massive fraud with the mail-in ballots. And we've got to stop counting those ballots. Thank you, America. I won. Have a good night. And then the mail-in ballots keep coming in and Trump's lead disappears. 
and Biden becomes the leader. And then you have massive chaos and conspiracy theories. And that is the nightmare that I worry about. And Senator, what do you think is the challenge of leadership, um, both for Joe Biden and his campaign, but also for other leaders around the country and other elected officials around the country in trying to avert that nightmare, describing it in advance, describing the, the, the signs of it that you see coming certainly is the sort of consciousness raising that's needed as the first step. What else can be done to avert what seems like the pre president's telegraphing that he's going to do? Rachel, you know, I mentioned in my speech that I get sick and tired of hearing Republicans tell us how much they love America. Well, if they love America, then they love American democracy. And now is the time for them to stand up in a very forceful way and say, hey, Mr. President, if you lose this election, you are leaving office. No ifs, buts, and maybes. Will Republicans do that? Some may. But I have my doubts. But what we have got to do is, among other things, put pressure on Republicans to demand that we do not lose our democratic heritage in this country and that they are going to stand, no matter how they vote, they're going to demand that every vote is counted and the winner is inaugurated. Senator, over the next uh, less than six weeks now, I know that you've said that you are going to do everything in your power to try to avert this nightmare scenario. And I know that these remarks today, uh, this speech today was part of it. What else should we um, be on the lookout for from you um, over these next five and a half weeks? And uh, you obviously still command incredible support and loyalty uh, from all the people who worked on both of your presidential campaigns and supported you through all that and who really still see you as the a leader of the progressive movement in this country who doesn't really have any peers in that regard. What are you asking uh, people who respect you and like you to do over these next five and a half weeks and what should we expect to see from you? Well, we are working very, very hard, not only on this issue, Rachel, we're working hard to see that Biden wins. We have already held, I think, 12 virtual town meetings I'm going to be out, I suspect, on the campaign trail as best we can, given the pandemic, uh, as soon as I can. But I think what all of us have got to do, and I say this to the Republicans who are watching, I know you, you're not going to vote for Biden, that's fine, you're going to vote for Trump, okay. But stand up, if you're a veteran, you fought, put your life on the line to defend the Constitution of the United States. And now is the time demand to demand that that constitution be respected and adhered to. So one of the things, I mean, this may sound strange to people, I'm going to reach out to Republicans and say, hey, we disagree on everything. But I hope that you respect the constitution. People like Benjamin Ginsburg, uh, people like Dan mm -hmm. Coates wrote a very good op-ed, New York Times recently. He is Trump's former Republican senator uh, from Indiana, a uh, conservative guy former intelligence director under Trump. And he said, we need a bipartisan commission to oversee this election so that people have faith in our democracy. We got to reach out to those folks as well. Senator Bernie Sanders, sir, it is great to see you. Thank you so much for making time tonight. It's good to have you here. Thank you very much.